Hi, this is PDF Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.com, and this is tutorial 238. So in our last tutorial, we went ahead and created a health bar system, and we got it working. You know, the health bar, we have the ability to move the health up and down on the bar. Uh, today, I wanted to start getting a little more advanced and move directly into our new loot window. So if you remember in our loot window before, we had that big bar at the bottom, and it had a bunch of slots in it. I want it to be a little bit different this time. Instead of just being this fixed bar at the bottom of the screen, uh, which is okay if you want it that way, by all means do it. Uh, but what I want is actually um, a window that pops up, uh, let's say in the center of the screen, and looks kind of like our inventory window in the sense that it will have uh, a bunch of slots in it and a bunch of rows of these slots. Uh, so before we actually start this, let's go ahead and open up uh, our texture packer. And we're going to have to add some more textures to it for uh, to use for actual slots and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and remake it uh, from what we had before. So I'm just going to set mine to 512 by 512. Uh, I'll leave it at smooth. I'll shrink that down. Uh, I'm not going to bother putting any padding in this time. Uh, we've gone over the padding before. Uh, if you find that you're your sprites actually have bleeding going on from uh, one element to the other. Make sure you increase your padding. And of course, you know, border padding is, you know, around the outside of the border. Shape padding uh, gives padding around the shapes and, you know, likewise with the rest. Uh, there's nothing here I want to do, so we're going to shrink that down. And we'll want to change the format to JSON. And we also want a data file. So I'm in my resources folder. Uh, we've already gone over this before. I called it GUI sheet last time. So I'm actually going to stick to the same name. And I actually need some textures here. So let's go ahead and uh, well, let's load some textures up. So I'm going to come over here to my finder, head to my desktop, uh, right here. Uh, I'm going to go into these other, this is the folder that uh, you get after uncompressing uh, the, the API that you get for, uh, well, the package you download from the GitHub. And if you look here, we have the texture pack, pack, uh, pack resources. And I'm going to keep using these since uh, if you're following along with this tutorial, this is probably included with it. I'm not sure if uh, future versions will still be included, but at least right now it is. And I'm going to want to select the ones that I've already had before, uh, which was the progress bar and the progress bar border. And I'm going to want something to represent my, uh, what do you call it? The... Uh, the, bu the buttons in my, my backpack. Uh, so these actually look okay. They, we have the checked uh, down and up. I'm actually just going to take these two and I'll use the, the down one, this image here, for an empty pack slot and I'll use the up one uh, for a pack slot that has something in it. Of course later on we'll want to change that to the actual icon of an item but uh, for now let's just get uh, two different textures that we can use to flip between in. And like I said, we're also going to want the progress bar uh, just to keep our last example working. And I think that's it for now. That should be all we really need. So I'm just going to go in, drag them into our little sprites thing. And of course it makes it. And just to demonstrate again, just up here quickly, uh, border padding. If you were to add one, if you watch up here, you notice it moves away from the border a bit. Shape padding, when you add one here, all the shapes get pushed away by one. And it might be a little bit no more noticeable if I use a bigger number. Or if just increase it slowly here. So everything just gets pushed away. And the border one, everything just gets pushed away from the border. And of course you can play around with the rest to figure out exactly what they do. Uh, but I said I'm not going to use any, any padding right now. If I find I need it, I can always come back and adjust it. And make sure my outputs are all fine. All right. Uh, make sure you don't hit save. You want to come up and actually hit publish. Uh, I've been playing around uh, quite a bit with this lately, and uh, I keep hitting save, and that's not what you want. So go ahead, hit publish, or you can use the hotkey. So I've gone ahead and published. I'm going to shrink this down. Uh, I'm going to keep this open too. I'm going to go ahead and open up my Unity project. I'll have to adjust this to fit the screen. All right, so this is what's imported. Uh, I'm actually going to have to go to this folder and rename this. If you remember in our last 
tutorial and in the tutorial that uh, comes with it on YouTube, uh, you can't use JSON. It's not going to be recognized by, I believe it was the Android system. It was one of the systems, and I believe it was a mobile one. Uh, so we'll just switch over to text, and I'll just shrink that down. I'll grab my the actual texture, make it clamp, GUI. Uh, you don't really have, well, I'm going to set the maximum size to 512. You know, that's exactly what it is anyway. If I did want to shrink it down for whatever reason, I could just go ahead and make it uh, 256. But I'm just going to leave all that. Uh, let me see, we're in the health bar example. If we hit play, it should still work. There we go. We have the exact same textures that we had before. Now, one thing I haven't gone over, if we just let this fill up a bit, is the Z, uh, the, the Z level, basically what shows on top of what. And if we actually zoom in, this little white bar down here is actually part of this bar. So if we actually had the border part on top, it would hide that little white bar. And that's something we will get into. Uh, just not right now. It's more of a little... A finesse thing and if we actually went back and looked at the code I remember when we we're creating it we have uh, the ability to put a Z in there I believe I believe it was right in here where we could put the layer uh, but anyway we'll get into that a little bit later on uh, let's go ahead and create a new project oh, not a new project sorry a new scene and I'm just going to save this new scene to the scenes and I'm just going to call it inventory. Actually, sorry, we work on the loop window. And there it is right there. Okay, so I'm going to come up, take my camera just like before, make sure it calls everything. Uh, we'll want to get rid of the, make sure the UI layer is unchecked. Now we're going to need a few game objects in here. So I'm going to go ahead and create an empty. And I'm going to copy it twice. And the first one I'm going to call is UI. Next one I'll call UI Toolkit. Now if you remember in the last tutorial, I went ahead and just made one called UI Toolkit and just put everything on it. Uh, looking through some of the more advanced tutorials or examples that came with the package, I noticed that they were using UI and then had a child of UI Toolkit. Um, I'm just going to do the exact same thing. We'll set the layer here to be the UI layer, and I'll just put it on all my children. This here I'm going to call my loot window, and this is what I'm going to attach the script to, which I'll create now. So we'll just go ahead and create a C sharp script, and I'll call it loot window. Uh, the great thing about doing it this way here is I'll probably be able to use this loot window also for my inventory window, at least the exact same, um, pretty much the exact same script. Uh, at least that's the end goal. We'll see how it progresses. So I'll come in, I'll just make sure the name's right. And I'm just gonna get rid of everything that's in here. I'll save that off, head back in Unity. I'll select my loot window, just drag that on. And I'm gonna grab my UI toolkit, open up the plugins, grab the UI toolkit, put that there. So we'll configure it while we're here. We'll need a material. We'll just use the same one. Uh, texture Packer configure name, which was GUI Sheet. Uh, I'm not going to bother with any of those options. I'm going to go to my UI now, drag the UI script on there. Uh, the UI layer is UI layer. And I'm not going to bother playing with any of the other options. It'd be kind of nice if it could just detect its own layer so it wouldn't have to fill out, but that's okay. It's not that bad. It's just a click. I'm just going to go ahead and hit start, make sure there's no errors popping up. All right. So I'm going to head back into my script. Now, the way I want this to work is, well, to start off with, uh, we'll make our start. And the first thing I want to do actually is just be able to uh, make a row of buttons. So just to kind of demonstrate how this looks, I'm going to want a row of say, let's four buttons. And then I'm going to want to come down and make another row of four more, bu four more buttons. And just keep doing that. And let's say I'm going to make four rows. 
So it's a total of 16 you know, pack slots that we want. Uh, so if we actually look at the way we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to be able to create a button or something to represent a, a pack slot. For now, we'll just use buttons because it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're going to have to be able to store all these in a horizontal row and then store these horizontal rows into a group of, uh, well, one big vertical. So let's just quickly start this out. First thing I want to do is actually just, let's just create a button. So I'm going to make a UI. And it should be button, I believe. Uh, not IU, UI button. And I'm just going to call this slot. And let's make this equal to a UI button dot create. And then whatever the name was that we actually gave it in our texture or the name of the texture that we used. And uh, the down one is the clear one and the unchecked is the red one. I'm going to use CB down for my empty pack slot for now. So it's just CB down dot PNG. So CB and I missed a quotation there. CB down dot PNG. Now the name of it when it's being clicked, I'm going to use the CB unchecked dot PNG, which will be this red one. So I'll head back in and CB unchecked dot PNG and then the location so I'll just start off at X comma X that's good enough I'm not going to worry about the, uh, the layer if we look here there we go so that should just put a button on the screen let's go ahead and unity and we'll see what happens So we started up, uh, we get nothing. Let me just take a look here. Uh, CB unchecked. Oops, I didn't mean to actually open up the script. Uh, let me just go ahead and check the name. CB unchecked. I must have spelt it wrong. And it's this comma at the end. So we'll come back into Unity. I'm going to clear all my errors, start it back up, and we should get a box here. There we go, nothing new. Uh, let's go ahead and put four of them there. Uh, so I'm actually going to do this by creating an array. And we'll just say slot. Uh, we'll have to have some iterator there, so we're going to have to say how big this is going to be. So I'm going to make it equal to uh, new UI button and we want four across so we'll make an array of four and then I'll throw it on a for loop and there's someone I forget their name on uh, tutorial 20 mentioned that in mono develop if you type four and then hit tab twice it'll fill, fill in all the basic information you need for it and it's actually quite handy oops I accidentally erased that line I wanted to copy it because all we have to do now is just actually come through and you know, it gives you the template. You just got to fill it out now. And the only thing we really need to change here is, well, we're switching it to four, but what we could also do is just do slot. This is probably a better way to do it. Length. And I'm going to go through and say slot I is equal to Uh, this here and this is the X and Y position now the Y position we're going to leave the same but what we want to change in the X position position is we're going to want to take the the number we're on so on the first one you know it starts off at zero then one two three and we're going to want to multiply that by some number and that number is going to be the actual width of our button uh, plus some sort of offset and to be honest I really don't know how big these buttons are uh, let me just go in Unity and take a quick look here. Uh, they're probably, what, 50 pixels, 40 pixels? 
So I'm gonna say 50, that if it's 40, that'll give me about a 10 offset, which is about 25% of the actual width of the button. Uh, so we'll just say that. And this here should go, actually go ahead and create four buttons for us in a row now. Unless I spell it wrong. <laughs> and I have a s underscore up there. I don't want that. I only use that for my private variables. So let's go ahead. We still have more errors. Uh, let's see what the error was here. And it's because I have one there as well. And one more try. Uh, so there we go. It worked out great. So we have four slots here. Uh, let's go ahead and put them in our horizontal row now. Uh, so the way we do that, um, so we've got the four buttons done. So the way we're actually going to do that is to create a UI horizontal layout. And if you want to know what all these, all the possibilities are here, if we come back into Unity and we go into plugins, uh, they have all sorts of them. Like there's your base elements. Uh, here's your containers. You have the horizontal, the vertical, and the vertical panel. Uh, well, the materials is just uh, the basic materials. Um, they have shaders, which I believe we have our set to. Yes. And you can just go through. Here's all your animation. Here's all your different elements. But everything you can create, you should be able to find in here. Now, you might have to actually do a little bit of reading and testing to get some of these to work, but everything is here. So let's go ahead and head back into Mono Develop. And I'm just going to call this row because it just represents a row in our inventory. And I'm going to set this equal to, oh, uh, I spelt it wrong, horizontal row. Now the, they don't have a constructor that takes nothing. So we're going to have to put something in there. Uh, let me just put the new here. And if we actually erase this and take a look here, it just wants a spacing. So I'm just going to throw a 20 in there for spacing. And when we come down here, what I'm going to do after we've created the slot, I'm going to add the slot to my horizontal row. So row dot add child. And if we take a look here, uh, it, it can take an array of children to add. Uh, one thing I found that is you can actually add them one at a time as well, and it'll just keep uh, adding them in, queuing them in for you. So I'm just going to add my slots, I. There we go. And if we go ahead into Unity and fire it up, it should still all work, everything. Uh, you can't really see a difference here. Uh, if we notice with the spacing, it actually spaces things out a little bit too much. There we go. It's a little closer. I could probably go a little bit more than that. I'm going to bring it down, uh, put my spacing down to, uh, I'm just actually going to use a one pixel spacing, I think. Okay, well, that's obviously not enough. So I'm just going to say five. And to be honest, I really should be putting that in a variable and storing it somewhere. But since I'm just testing just to get things working, uh, I'll just put everything in line for now. Uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty good. The spacing of five. And let's come down here and just to show that everything is in that panel. Let's take that, or sorry, that row. Uh, let's take that row and we're going to position that row. And we can position it anywhere. I'm actually just going to take the position center. And this will make that whole row move to the center and anything in it is going to move there. So if we fire it up, uh, there we go. So we actually now have one row uh, completed full of uh, four little boxes here. And these graphics are a little bit bigger than what I actually want to use for my game. Uh, but fi they're fine for placeholder graphics. Uh, everyone has access to them, like I said before. And, you know, everything should be good here. So in our next tutorial, we're going to go ahead and start creating multiple rows and start putting them down inside of a, uh, another panel. Anyway, thank you for watching. and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.